Before we begin our proceedings, we would like to introduce Auntie Yvonne Weldon from the Metropolitan Aboriginal Land Council to welcome us to country. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers. I stand before you on the land of Eora. I've grown physically on this land, but in my blood and always in spirit, I am Wiradjuri. As was said, my name is Yvonne Weldon. I am a sovereign woman. I come from Cowra here in New South Wales. My ancestral bloodlines connect all on the Clare, which is also known as the Lachlan, and of the Murrumbidgee Rivers. I am the elected chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, who are the cultural authority under the Aboriginal Land Rights Act for the land we're meeting on. I would like to pay my respects to all elders past and present, and to all First Nations and non-First Nations people here this evening. It is always a humbling privilege to provide a welcome to country. For me, it is a profound honour and a luxury of time. Time given by you and time of the many warriors that started the traditions for all of us. A welcome isn't just words, it is a reflection of where we are. Not this modern day structure, but the continuous link of life, lessons, purpose and nurturing supplies. The boundaries of the traditional owners are not defined by the hand or by the pen, but through the natural landscapes of the earth. The All Nations country covers the Hooks River in the north, the Nepean in the west, and the Georges River in the south. On behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, the elders and the members, I welcome everyone to the land of the Gadigal. I acknowledge the Gadigal people whose spirits and ancestors will always remain with this land, our Mother Earth. As you travel across this beautiful continent of ours, understand you're entering the lands of a nation a tribe and a clan that has existed here for over 60,000 years. The First Nations of this land are the most diverse, resilient, unique and sustainable people on the planet. We are the oldest living culture of the world. It is important to acknowledge this country's rich, first and original history. So let us pay homage to the many warriors that created pathways for all of us, the ones recognised and the ones we've never heard of. Our journey and our milestones can only be truly received if we can see, if we can feel, and if we can make a positive difference put into real action. We must commit to making our society, our world inclusive, breaking through barriers and not creating them. All of us together can make positive changes to multiple generations starting a healing to the past generations by declaring what should not have taken place. To the present day generations, giving you hope and creating future uh, for our next generations, for everyone in this country. Sharing what we have and caring for each other is my people's way of life. Our family and our friends are our community. This is a practice we have continued that has been passed on from one generation to the next. The greatest gift you can ever give someone is your time. As emerging leaders, whether you lead yourself, your family, community or people, you can often take on more than you realise. For me, any role taken on is not whether you're at the front leading, it's whether you walk with those that need your strength. Know that we are all here for you and with you regardless of what study choices you make and or the career path. So as you connect, learn and share, tonight, tomorrow and beyond, know that our future is only as good as our history and we need to reflect upon the footsteps we're leaving to know where we're heading. The truth must be told and must be heard if we are to walk together. So join me by learning from the ancient and lived teachings of this land's First Peoples. Let us all draw upon my people's spirits as we continue on our journey. May my people's spirits walk with you and guide you as we strive forward for us all. Again, on behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, welcome to Gadigal Land. This always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Auntie Yvonne, for that beautiful welcome to country. Bella and I would also like to acknowledge that we meet on the 
the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to the elders both past, present and emerging. For those of you who don't know us, my name is Jaden French and I've just started my Year 12 studies at, at Endeavour Sports High School. I've been a GO Scholar since the start of this year and I'm so grateful for the opportunities GO has given me and for all the um, days we've had and all the experiences that they've given me. And I am Bella Keenan. I attend Chifley College Senior Campus. I am also now in Year 12. I have been a GO I have been a GO Scholar since the start of the year and I would like to thank GO for all the opportunities they have given me throughout the year and thank Michael, Adam and Shirley for everything they've done for me. Jaden and I can't wait to be a part of GO's 2020 graduating class and we are very proud to be your MCs tonight at GO's first official graduation ceremony. It is a pleasure to welcome all the GO scholars, GO family, directors, ecosystem partners and supporters. Without your support, guidance and love, we wouldn't be standing here, so thank you. Unfortunately, our GO Foundation patron in chief, the Honourable Linda Burney MP, can't be with us tonight. Auntie Linda sends her apologies, asking us to pass on, and I quote, Congratulations and best wishes at the graduation of these wonderful young people. This is a milestone that everyone should be proud of. Thank you, Auntie Linda. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce music legend and GO ambassador, Dan Sultan, to the stage for a very special performance of Every Day My Mother's Voice. This song is very special to us at GO because it's about Adam and his mum and the support she gave him. Uncle Dan and Paul Kelly performed it as the title track of the documentary, The Final Quarter. We loved it, and we know you will too. Please put your hands together to welcome Uncle Dan to the stage. <laughs> It's an honour to be here. Uh, I'd like to thank Shirley and the boys um, for having me today, but having me involved for the last few years. Um, I, uh, I actually didn't graduate high school, but I was at my high school graduation because they wanted me to perform at the graduation ceremony. So my grandma was there and I got my diploma. Um, Look, I was a bit slack, but I also didn't know I was dyslexic until I was in year 12. So it was amazing that I'd, I think I just, um, you know, bullshitted my way through it up until that point. But I, should, I just want to say to all the alumni, and the, you know, you should all be very proud. And I won't go on, and this isn't anything political, but, you know, we need to be twice as good to get half as much in this country. And on the other side, we need to do half as much to get quite twice the criticism as well. So having achievements like graduating, like Brownlow's, you know, like having a friend who's won a Brownlow. <laughs> <laughs> Aria's GQ or no. It's um it's a big deal and you should all be very proud of all your all your achievements and um you know, graduating is one pretty early on in life and may they continue and um, congratulations and thank you for that that beautiful welcome. Where's Auntie Yvonne? Okay, well, thank you. My daughter was born in Gadigal country and um, Gadigal land and I'm from Central Australia, so um, it's a beautiful place to live and to raise my, my little girl. Anyway, thanks very much. I'm going to sing a song written by Paul Kelly about Adam Goods. <laughs> 
when Paul asked me to do this with, with him, I, um, I pretended to shuffle some papers around. Oh, let me check my schedule. You know. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. That song is so beautiful, and we are. And we are extremely thankful to you for performing for us tonight. We know you have been really busy touring overseas and working in the rec recording studio today. So, thank you again for your support and making us Go Scholars feel so special. Please, everybody, put your hands together once more for Dan Sultan. Um, Dan, can you please just stay here for one second, please? <laughs> we would now like to call on Shirley Chow, the CEO of the Go Foundation, to begin tonight's graduation proceedings. Thank you, Shirley. Thanks, Bella. Thanks, uh, Jaden. Dan, can I borrow you for one second? Um, Dan's performance was incredible, but he, as you know, he's a Go ambassador, and he's recently, he and Bronnie have just recently had a baby, Lena, and we thought it was really important for Lena to look like a Go ambassador too. So we've got a little onesie, and on the back it says, Oh, the places I'll go. Great. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And 
And just in case there's any jealousy, we've got one for Adam as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel, um, uh, I feel like we've already had such a wonderful experience in coming together and being part of that amazing smoking ceremony that Tribal Warriors did. So if you could please put our hands together again, because it was such a privilege to be part of that. And to uh, Yvonne Weldon, who had to rush off, she um, has to go and do another welcome to country at the Opera House, but she asked me to pass on her apologies for leaving, but she started us off uh, beautifully. I'm going to just give you a, a little bit of um, information on what we're going to do with the graduation, and then I just want to say a few words before I announce our main act, our founders. Um, today we're going to celebrate the graduation of 2019 students and then because we haven't had a graduation ceremony before, we're also going to celebrate those students who have graduated since we started our scholarship program three years ago. Uh, and we'll tell you a little bit about each graduating student as they come up. Adam and Michael will give them a sash, which has been printed by Zachary Bennett Brooks, one of our artists who's been very supportive of the Go Foundation and Zachary produced a design especially for us. Um, Zach is an Indigenous man of Torres Strait Islander ancestry. He was born and raised on Dharawal country in Wollongong, and he's the artist of Saltwater Dreamtime. And I'm just going to read, if I can, uh, what the design, uh, you'll see the design as Adam and Michael give, it, give the sash out, but what the design means and why he painted it. The circular sections of the design represent meeting places, family and community. The circles can also represent the students' achievements so far and the goals they are yet to achieve. Lines connect the circles to each other in all sorts of ways. These connecting lines are symbolic of the different journeys we all take in life. And you'll notice that there's a painting down here. He painted that especially for Go. And that design will be the design on our Indigenous sash now going forward. Graduating students, you all ready? Our graduating students have achieved so much uh, to come to this point. And we know exactly the barriers that they've had to go through and what they've dealt with in their final years of school. They've all achieved incredible things and sometimes against the odds. They've had people tell them that they can't do it and they've had people tell them that it's too hard. And today, when they walk down here and accept their sash from Adam and Michael and a gift from Go, they are testament to the fact that hard work gets results and that if we support them and believe in them, they can achieve great things. These kids are the leaders of tomorrow. And what Dan was saying earlier about having to work twice as hard, well, these kids have worked twice as hard. So tonight, Cheer, applaud, do whatever you want to to celebrate these kids because we are so, so proud of them. And I know when you hear their achievements and um, you share in what, what they, they're doing now, and what they're going to do, you'll be just as proud. So before we get started with the graduation ceremony, it's my privilege to hand over to our founders, Adam Goods and Michael O'Loughlin. Thank you, Shirley. Um... Thank you, Auntie, for that incredible welcome to country. As a proud Narunga, Nuttinger, and Ghana man, we've spent many years here in Gadigal, and uh, it's been a, an absolute honour to be here. And, 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 and obviously, we've uh, spent our life here earning a living, raising families, and um, it's been an incredible journey. And uh, we're forever grateful for the mob over this way because we're a long way from our own people, and it's just been an incredible journey. Um, I'm going to be really quick and, and we've got, obviously Adam's going to do a, a little bit of a keynote speak um, a bit later on uh, and I know there's some thank yous as well but I guess I stood up here I think at the beginning of the year uh, when we had some of our students and, and obviously the crowd is a little bit bigger today, it must have been uh, um, Dan Sultan, I don't know, um, he stitched me up there didn't he? Um, but the message is still the same, Go Foundation is about creating opportunities and for our young people the opportunity presented itself to you guys and you guys have done an incredible job this year and we're so, so proud of you. So can I just give a round of applause for our students again? <clears throat> We've come from far and wide. Uh, I've got my mob here from Adelaide 
Um, we've started our scholarship program down there and they're doing some incredible things there. Danny Marg, Tom and the guys, um, thank you for making the trip here. Johnny Box has come all the way down from, uh, from, from Queensland, who's doing some incredible things there as well. He's another graduate and doing amazing things at universities. Um, our board, who've been incredible. Um, our ambassadors, um, where's uh, Anita? Anita's here. Anita, can you put your hand up, please? Uh, a round of applause for Anita. Anita is, she, sorry? And had a great session with the kids today. Um, it's just an incredible author. Um, you mean the world to both Adam and I and our board, and you uh, are, are truly an inspiration to us, and, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, Dan Salton, who we heard, heard from before. Um, what, a, what a, an unbelievable song, um, and everyone's seen the film, but when you've got him singing, Paul Kelly singing, you've got the, the, the video in the background, you've got this guy running around with his mother, and it just brings tears to, to your eyes and it really does make the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. And I know when I watched it with my kids, they were in tears as well. And it was just about, um, I think, one of the most inspirational um, songs that I've ever heard. So uh, it was great to have him here. And, and Kai Simon's not here, obviously, but um, the, our ambassadorship is growing. Um, we have a lot of people believing in what we're trying to do. And again, to our students, to the people here who haven't... I guess heard Adam and I speak before, it's about the opportunity, but when that opportunity presents itself, you've got to grab it with both hands and not let go. It's not about how hard you get hit and how many times you get knocked down, it's about how you get up. And that's how we've lived our life, that's how we've lived our football journey. The next episode for us now is business ownership and try to become role models in that regard as well. Um, and it's something that we don't take very, very uh, don't take lightly. So. Um, I know everyone's really um, itching to get on with the, the graduation. We're very proud. It's our first one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the, the, I guess the, um, the preparation that's gone into this, um, again, making mention of our board, but in particular to Shirley, you've had a rough day or two and, um, and we love you. The way you've sacrificed, the way you've steered the ship um, along with our board, um, our previous chairman's here, Peter Moura. Um, it has just been incredible. So with all our love, uh, thank you for you, Alex, and, and all the crew at Go who've just done an incredible job. Uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Just a round of applause for our staff, please. <coughs> um, that's going to be it from, from myself. You'll hear from Adam in a little bit. But uh, enjoy. As Shirley said, make some noise. Let's rock this place tonight. Thank you. Pull these down, right down. The, uh, actually, can I just add to Mick's comment on the team? Today I had to leave for an emergency this morning and we had a mentoring day for our kids. So much work goes into those days. And I'd just like to acknowledge our team, Evelyn Bowes, Celine yeah. Bonaire, and especially Alex Hodgkinson, who have worked day and night to pull today together. And then when the day came, I jumped ship and they had to do it all by themselves and I think they did a remarkable job. Yep. And I'd just like to announce, where's Mark Heiss? Stand up. Mark, stand up please, Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Heiss is joining us at the end of January. He's our new head of scholarships. Please welcome him to go. We are absolutely thrilled uh, that we can attract the calibre of Mark to our organisation and it's going to mean nothing but great things for our kids. All right, on with the journey. So we're going to start tonight with Lua Pellegrini. Lua is headed to a Bachelor of Arts degree at UNSW and she's received a place at Bassa College. Her Year 12 visual art major work is going to be on the cover of the Catholic School Guide for 2020. She's one of our original students and she graduates from Loretto Normanhurst. Charlotte Ryan. Charlotte is going to study a Bachelor of Clinical Science at Macquarie University and she is also one of our original GO students. I also happen to know that Charlotte is a national runner and has um, placed very highly recently in the national meet.
Kaylin Fennell. Kaylin graduates Year 12 from Maryland's High and this year he was school captain. Yeah. Kaylin has applied for a six weeks customer service training internship at the ATO starting in January and he's hoping to study graphic design at DCE. <laughs> Talisha Sutherland Robinson. Talisha graduates Year 12 at Riverside High. She's the first GO student to get a Bloomberg internship and starts here in January. She's hoping to study a Bachelor of Business at UTS. Jessica Rose Johnson. Jess is graduating Year 12 at Springwood High and she wants to study social work so that she can inspire younger Indigenous children and show them the light at the end of the tunnel. Yaron Fair Townsend. Yaron graduates Year 12 at St Gregory's College and in March 2020 is going to England to play cricket for Colchester in Essex. Brandon Webster Mansfield. Where are you, BJ? Ah, oh, here you go. BJ graduates Year 12 at St Gregory's College and he's playing rugby league, rugby league for the under-20s West Tigers. Jared Smith. Jared graduates Year 12 from Sydney Boys High. Jared was the first Indigenous student to attend Sydney Boys High in 30 years. He's going to UNSW to study software engineering and he's received a residential scholarship at Shalom College. <laughs> Jasmine Carr. Jasmine, has she gradu Jasmine graduates Year 12 at Paralawi Art 12 in South Australia and Jasmine has completed a Certificate 3 in hairdressing in addition to her school subjects of arts in the community, material products and English. <laughs> James Webb. James also graduates Year 12 at Paralawi Art 12 in South Australia. He has completed his Certificate 3 in carpentry and gained an apprenticeship in construction and from Term 3 onwards sorry, for in construction from turn three, as well as completing his SACE. <laughs> Hannah Yon. Hannah graduates her schooling in year 11. Hannah has completed all the requirements a year early. She was part of the inaugural South Australian Aboriginal Secondary Training Academy, STEM Academy, which partnered with Adelaide University to run a full day STEM program. Hannah has excelled in society and culture this year, receiving astounding feedback from her teachers. <laughs> Jeremy Wanganeen. Jeremy graduates Year 12 at Paralawi Art 12 in South Australia. He completed his Cert 3 in Sport and Recreation, his first aid course, the Responding to Abuse and ne Neglect training, and has commenced work at Paralawi as an Aboriginal Community Education Officer mentoring younger students. <laughs> at this year's SASTA presentation, in front of 500 students in 75 schools, uh, Jeremy won Student of the Year and James Webb won Most Gained Student. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of 2019. Can we move this? They can stand on, sir. You want to grab your... Just stay there, just stay there. Oh, we've got one more 2019 student. I'm so sorry. Natalie Abrams. Sorry, Nat. Natalie, Natalie graduates... I don't know how I missed you, honey. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Natalie graduates Year 12 at Loretto Normanhurst. For her art major work for Year 12, Natalie wrote an Aboriginal children's book called Mangiri and Turtle about mental health and the importance of reaching out and seeking help. Natalie will study a Bachelor of Psychology at university next year. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates of 2019. And now we'd like to celebrate the graduates of previous years. Brittany Abram. Brittany was uh, graduated Year 12 at Loretto Normanhurst in 2017. She's now finishing a Bachelor of Nursing at the University of Armidale and is hoping to start a Bachelor of Medicine in 2020. Noah Albany. Noah graduated Year 12 at St Gregory's College in 2016 and is one of two of our first graduating students. Noah is now studying a Bachelor of Arts and Law at UNSW. He was a career trackers intern at Herbert Smith Freehills and is now working at the Office of the Children's Guardian. <laughs> Bronte Charles. Where are you, Bronte? <laughs> Bronte graduated Year 12 at Pimble Ladies College last year. She's studying a Bachelor of PR and Media at Macquarie and Bronte has won two scholarships this year to cover accommodation and her hex fees at uni. <laughs> John Boxer. John Boxer graduated university last year with an honours degree in a Bachelor of Exercise, uh, Exercise and Sports Science at the University of South Australia. In 2019, John graduated from Bachelor of Health Science with honours and his research looked into investigating the influence that mindfulness meditation has on AFL kicking performance. And I'd like to, there are a number of students who couldn't come tonight, despite being part of the graduating class. And I'd just like to acknowledge them, read their names out, and then we can acknowledge uh, our students. Gerald Golding, who graduated Year 12 at Matraville Sports High. Alex Pace, who graduated Year 12 at St Gregory's College. Cassidy Wright, who graduated St Gregory's College in 2017. Akira Kelly, who graduated Year 12 at Matraville Sports High. David Wyman, who graduated Year 12 at St Gregory's College last year. Mason Brincat, who graduated Year 12 at St Gregory's College. Ali Grace Montefin, who graduated from Matraville Sports High. Yaron Doyle, who graduated Year 12 at Matraville Sports High. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the graduates of the GO Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause, please, for the graduates of the Go Foundation. I think we're okay. Good job. Of course. That's okay. Thank you. I too would like to acknowledge that the land that we meet on tonight is the traditional lands of the Gadigal people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. I also acknowledge the Eora Nation as the traditional owners of the Sydney region and their culture and heritage beliefs are still important to the living Gadigal people today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here to celebrate the Go Foundation's first graduation ceremony. Year 12 graduates and our uni graduate, John Boxer, congratulations. Congratulations on the dedication and perseverance that you've shown in reaching this milestone, on the discipline and focus you have learnt in coming this far, 
on the importance you have placed on your education and, of course, your graduation. Most importantly, congratulations on the success you will have from here on in utilising your skills, education and experience in creating a better future and world. Your role is so important to society and your presence is key to our future. I'm honoured to stand here today amongst each of you because this and what you have done up until now, I believe, is the foundation of great things to come. In my experience, the richness of learning and opportunity comes not only from the formal education that we, you receive, but the people you meet, the situations you encounter, and the mistakes you make. I'm sure many of you have learnt in some way or another the importance of preparation and felt the stress of deadlines. And I'm sure you've experienced the support of good friendships, the pull of peer pressure, you may also have started to understand the strength of your own mind in challenging situations and the weakness of your body after too many all-nighters finishing those final assignments. But not everyone is as privileged as we are to be in this position. That is, to be standing here having been educated, to have had the opportunity to go to a good school, be a GO scholar, work hard and, of course, graduate. Often we don't realise how lucky we are to have had the opportunity to be educated because we take education for granted. I've seen and met so many people in so many areas that don't have the opportunity to be educated like we have, who cannot read or write and have not been able to participate in learning like we have. In my opinion, education is the absolute underlying key for people to achieve their goals not just because it provides them with the knowledge and understanding of the world and the people around them, but also because it enables people to dream and dream big. Dream about things that they wouldn't otherwise dream about, but it's the foundation for achieving our dreams, not the guarantee. I hope you always appreciate the opportunity that you have had to learn, to grow, to dream, and most importantly, to do. When I think back to my schooling, primary school, high school, I was a really shy kid. I was one of the younger kids in my grade and I didn't talk a lot. But I loved learning and I learnt from listening, so it suited me fine. I do remember my report cards were all quite consistent across all subjects and throughout the grades. They all said, he is quiet but shows potential. In 1997, when the Sydney Swans drafted me, at first, my coach at the time said exactly the same thing, shows potential. But he took it one step further, and it was only then that this comment resonated with me. He said, you are here and you have been drafted because you show potential. That's what's got you here, but now, what are you gonna do with it? And it suddenly hit me, we were all there because we had the potential. We were one of the lucky ones that had a level of skill that someone else had seen. We had the potential to do more, but the difference now was whether or not we chose to do something with it. That's when I realised the real challenge and work started then, to learn about my teammates, to learn about the Swans as an organisation, learn from my achievements and learn about myself how I handle stress, how I see challenges, and how to utilise my ability. So what are you going to do with your potential? I'm sure there have been many challenges you've had to overcome to this point, but even bigger challenges are what are to come next, and what you choose to do with it from here, and which path you choose to take. Challenges don't mean what's in front of us is impossible. It means, in my eyes, that they are opportunities for me to utilise my potential that others saw in me. Sometimes we just need to break down what's in front of us, prioritise what's important and be present in that moment. Yes, there may be sacrifices along the way, there certainly was for me. 
But, when, but what motivated me through these challenges and sacrifices was my desire to work the hardest I could to reach and achieve my dreams. And what I know about my old industry, which I'm sure doesn't differ that much from yours, is that your skill and talent is what has got you here. But it's up to your mindset, determination, dedication and discipline going forward and the way in which you handle what gets thrown your way that will make you stand out from the rest. Some of you will go on to university studies, some of you may go on to vet courses, and some of you may have already started one of them. All of you have the basis to do whatever you want from here. So be excited. Don't be daunted by your potential, chosen courses, what the future holds, or what you can achieve. But who am I to tell you what to do? I'm just a Nudjanamatnanaranga man that went to school, but not to university. But I'm also a guy that has always had a desire to learn, and one that feels so proud and privileged for having such a rich education. I'm only here to tell you my thoughts and share my experiences. It's up to you to do the right thing from here. I stand here tonight like a proud father. I'm so excited about the next chapters of your lives and the role that we can still play at Go. Once a Go scholar, always a Go scholar. Congratulations again, you mob. Have a great night. Thank you, Adam. Your words inspire me every day. I would now like to call to the stage Go Scholar John Boxer to give a reply on behalf of the students. Try that. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, that was really good. It puts the pressure on me. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we meet on today and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. So my name's John David Boxer IV and I grew up in Ghana land in South Australia. My mob are the Rurungu people from the southwest of Adelaide in a place just outside of Port Lincoln called Penong. I'm the eldest sibling and the second oldest in my wider, wider family. However, growing up, I knew very little about my Aboriginal heritage due to a number of reasons. This began with my great nana, Rita Boxer, who was part of the Stolen Generation and continued with my parents wanting to live in different places, mum the city, dad the country, which resulted in a lot of moving, different schools, and made it difficult to have friends, sense of belonging. As with the boys, Footy was my sort of solace, and I found wherever I went, I could play sport, and that kept me happy. As for my schooling, um, with the interruptions and everything, I was quite a little troublemaker, tended to rather be outside chasing the ball than inside reading books. However, I still graduated being the very first person in my family to finish high school, which was great. However, again, Having footy the only thing on my mind, I didn't really have any career aspirations, so I was a little lost. And at the same stage, I was that typical teenager that caught up with girls, the wrong crowd, and found myself losing my commitment to footy and lost my opportunity to play at a higher level. I then began working around, labour jobs, no real purpose, just getting money, doing the odd jobs, until my brother suggested I do my personal training certification so I could do what I like doing, oh, hello, and be physically active. So I did that. Five years later, I um, was then managing a gym, living out of home with my fiance, so going pretty well. But the sales side of working in a gym didn't quite meet my love for sport. And then I began looking for other options and realised everything I needed or wanted to do required a university degree. So I took the jump, resigned from my job, moved back in home with mum and then sat the mature age entry exam to get into university. 
So a couple of months later, I finally got accepted and began my degree. Having not studied for almost seven years, it was a pretty tough slog early on. And then um, in my second year, mum decided to move to Melbourne and dad lived that country. So I was kind of in lieu of what I was going to do. But um, this is where the... So, oh. <laughs> This is where Go Foundation really helped me out. <laughs> I, applied, I applied for the scholarship with little idea on what it was going to do for me and was soon blessed with a strong network of supportive, supportive people I could lean on for advice, which carried all throughout my degree. Especially Shirley. Thanks so much for all your constant support and positive reinforcement. All right, get up. In my final year of my bachelor, I was fortunate enough to earn a cadetship with Adelaide Crow's high performance team. Um, having the GO scholarship really enabled me to take this full steam ahead and not worry about working crazy, stressful hours on top. I was lucky enough that during my time there, I helped out with the trainings, joined in with a couple of the boys and the coaches liked what they saw and gave me a chance to tick off my little dream of playing at that higher level. So I played in the Crows SANFL side, all from going to university with the help of the Go Foundation. So that was two life goals ticked off in one. I got to work in an AFL club and then I got to play and meet some of the really cool players in the club. Overall, the Go Foundation has really challenged me to grow as an individual, for example, speaking in front of people, <laughs> and, yeah, provide some amazing opportunities. So it's been a great place to network with the other students, um, learn more about my culture, and meet some very inspirational people. For example, earlier this year, I moved to Gold Coast to change of lifestyle where my partner got a new job. And with the help of Mick and Adam, I was introduced to a guy which created a great opportunity and I was able to coach on the MCG for the Dreamtime match earlier this year. So went from playing to coaching, which has been amazing. So as mentioned, the scholarship gave me that opportunity to focus on my studies with reducing the financial stress, but that was also reflected in an improvement of my GPA. This improvement then gave me the confidence to go on and do my honours research project, something five years ago wasn't even considering doing. So, yeah. Um, these are only some of the great things I've personally experienced as a Go Scholar, and I'm sure every other student that's been involved would have just as many stories, if not more, and I hope I hear some more down the track because I'll still be involved somewhere or another. But, um, yeah, the work the Go Foundation is doing is great and continue to do so is going to be amazing. So, Finally, I want to thank Go for helping me further understand what it means to not only be an Aboriginal man, but to be an educated Aboriginal man and the role we play influencing the younger generations, breaking that cycle. So thank you. I'm forever grateful. John, thank you. I'm going to say a few words about you in a, in a moment, but thank you. That was just remarkable and showed great bravery pushing through um, to share that story with us. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sam Moston, and I have the great honour of chairing the Go Foundation, along with my wonderful fellow board members who are here tonight, um, and a former chair, Peter Muir, who is also here tonight. Thank you, Peter. It's wonderful to have you continue to be part of the Go family, um, and to Shirley, to, to thank Shirley. As you've heard from our students and people involved with us, Shirley is an extraordinary leader of GO, and um, it's the extraordinary way in which she invests in every one of our students that you, you see tonight. Um, so thank you, Shirley. Um, and I'll thank your team in a moment. I'd also like to acknowledge that we meet on Gadigal land tonight and thank, um, thank very much Yvonne Weldon for her words of welcome. Yvonne always makes um, us feel very special when she offers a welcome. It always feels as if it's coming straight to you from Yvonne with a great deal of love and thought. So I know she's not here, but on behalf of Go, we want to thank Yvonne for that wonderful welcome. 
And I was remarking to Adam as we were standing in that remarkable smoking ceremony that um, the tribal warrior ceremony itself to be conducted here in one of the most modern buildings, in one of the most modern cities in the world, and to have that wonderful smell of the, the, the smoke when it first lit, um, and the power of us as a group of people coming together to help in that moment and to, and to be blessed by that smoke. Um, it's truly remarkable to be in a place like this um, to receive that welcome. And, um, and for that reason, I think we should really thank the team here at Bloomberg. We haven't mentioned them really tonight, but the Bloomberg team here has been a wonderful partner of GO. Um, Hina Teravotti, who's normally here and one of our greatest uh, supporters, couldn't make it tonight. She's away. But we do have Patrick and Yuki from Bloomberg, who've done a huge amount of work, not just tonight, but today with the Students' Education Day. So could we please thank Bloomberg for everything they've done for us. <laughs> now, of course, um, everyone has thanked Dan Salton. Um, Dan is, is just one of our favourite people ever. And of course, you heard tonight with the, the song um, and his relationship with, um, with the film. And I'd like to thank, the, I think there's some of the team here from, uh, from uh, Ian Darling's film, The Final Quarter. It's been an incredible year. Um, Adam, both films, The Final Quarter and The Australian Dream, have been um, huge successes critically, but most importantly with communities who are engaging with the learning that comes from those films and the team um, that have worked behind the final quarter in particular, who have the education programs with the Human Rights Commission um, and Reconciliation Australia, have been incredible partners of GO and we think the message of Adam's story um, and Michael's story and, and all Indigenous stories in this country uh, reach a new audience and particularly around all of our role in preventing racism and standing up against racism. So I'd like to thank the team for all the work they did in the film and some of them are here tonight so could you send our thanks back to, to others. Now Anita Heiss has also been mentioned, I know you hate being mentioned Anita, but um, Anita is, um, we're so lucky to have Anita as one of our ambassadors, she's been with us from the beginning, Anita was here today with the students working on the, some of the programs. Anita is one of Australia's most important authors. Um, she's one of the most um, important Indigenous voices in this country. She continues to win plaudits for all of her books. Um, she, uh, it was University of Canberra that has one of her books as Book of the Year. So every, every student, I think, every staff member at, and, and first year student at the University of Canberra will be reading Anita's book this year. And I'd encourage you, if there's one thing you take away from tonight, in addition to the inspiration from our students, Go and buy a book written by Anita Heiss or buy a book written by an Indigenous Australian person that shares the stories of this country. Um, as we've heard in the Boyer lectures this year, there's a great silence about our history that um, I think we learn from when we listen to the words of Indigenous authors and writers. And Anita, it's wonderful to have you associated with us and I hope you all read Anita's work if you haven't already. It's really important that we acknowledge our MCs for tonight, Bella and Jaden. Now, where are you, Bella and Jaden? There you are at the front. I know Thank you very much. Um, it's a big deal to come up and host an event, and you did a remarkable job, so thank you. We really, really appreciate um, all the preparation you put into that tonight. Um, and we'll always have our students as MCs at our events, I think, from now on. Um, our partners, you know, there are many of you here tonight. I'd like, I can't name you all, but I'd like to thank you for remaining so strongly supportive of the GO Foundation. I hope you can see tonight through just the stories and the imagination and the courage and the creativity of our graduating students and our students who are yet to graduate, why you're a partner with us. Um, it means the world to us that you remain with us and that you might introduce us to other people who can join our wonderful ecosystem um, because without you, we can't do any of this work. I was reflecting on your comments, John, about how you couldn't imagine five years ago standing here with the work you've done, the journey you've had, um, and thank you for sharing that very emotional time. And we hope that you'll always be a member of the GO family and come back and be part of teaching others about what you learn and, um, and what you can impart for our community of scholars, students, everyone associated with us. But I'm kind of thinking what it must be like to be Adam and Michael and James who founded this organisation over a decade ago, much longer than that actually, and how I guess you can't believe what you're seeing tonight for the first graduation ceremony and what might lie ahead. So I thought we should reflect for the students that you inspire us. You're the reason that GO exists. These three men 
decided to come together a long time ago to think about what their contribution could be. The rest of us are fellow travellers. We're just part of a journey, but we're led by them, and particularly Adam and Michael, as, um, as with your great leadership and what you're doing with your lives now, I'm sure um, it doesn't just inspire our students, it inspires us all. So um, I was just trying to imagine, as we think about all the people around this country, particularly this state, who are affected by the terrible fires at the moment and have a thought about all of those that aren't up here and having this wonderful night tonight, but maybe um, looking after their properties, their families, their lives. What we might have learnt if we'd engaged in Indigenous education and invested in Indigenous knowledge so much longer ago than just through Go, what we might have learnt about Indigenous land management, fire management, what a wonderful place we'd be if we'd started to do that then. We didn't, but now we can and Go's role in celebrating Indigenous culture, as well as the great aspiration for our students, is what we want to be now and in the years ahead. So thank you everyone for coming along. I'd like us all to thank once again the team who worked so hard today from Go. So I'd like to thank the team, Alex, Shirley, the, everyone involved. Most importantly though, on behalf of everyone here to congratulate our scholars um, for all that you will do, all that you have done. You're a member of our family now, but a, a huge cheer for our students once again. We'll be back here in February to launch the year with um, the next round of activities for grow, Go as we grow and, um, and make a bigger impact if that's possible. Um, we hope many of you will be back then and of course in a year's time there'll be more graduations and more amazing stories. So now it's time to have a bit of fun, um, mingle, there'll be more food and drink for a little while. I'd encourage everyone just to go and meet a student, talk to a student and maybe if our students don't mind sharing more of their stories with you so you know what Go is all about and what their futures are all about. Thank you everybody for coming and have a lovely festive season. Thank you.